Hello and welcome to the Isoclip Structural Calculator video. We're on the isoclips.com landing page here and if you look at the tabs on the top of the landing page you will see the Isoclip Structural Calculator. If you click on this it will direct you to the Structural Calculator itself. Today we're going to be going over an Isoclip Calculator example and you can see this example on the right which shows a typical detail using Isoclips. It will just uh, help understand how to use this calculator and have an example uh, to use it. At the top of the calculator we have an explanation on how to use it. There are these two arrows uh, that are either pointing up or down to expand the explanation or to retract the explanation. There's also, uh, you can enter your project information. This is not necessary, but if you want to create a report at the end of this calculator, uh, it is helpful. So for the purpose of this, I am saying that it's test one, it's in Toronto, Ontario, and the wall is the east wall. Since we're in Toronto, Ontario, I'm going to keep this as limit states design. Whether you are in Canada or in the United States, there are different design assumptions based on the country that your, your project is located in. Uh, if we're looking at this ice club calculator example, the subgird system depth is 4 inches, which is the depth from the base of the sheathing to the face of the uh, angle attached to the isoclip. And so I'm going to put 4 inches in the calculator over here. Uh, in the example, there is no insulation within the cavity, so I'm going to click no over there. Uh, the backup wall is 18 gauge uh, metal stud framing. And it's shown on the detail over here where it says 18 gauge stud framing. And uh, you can choose from your different steel studs, wood studs, uh, concrete and CMUs in, on the calculator. Uh, since this is a side view of the detail, you can see the L angle over here is uh, uh, on the side and clearly running horizontally along the clips. So I'm going to say the girt orientation is horizontal. Uh, the clip spacing, I'm going to stick with 16 inches on center, as typically steel studs are installed 16 inches on center. Sometimes steel studs are 24 inches on center, and more commonly you can use the 24 inch on center in a concrete application. And then you can also go every other studs, which stud, which is why you have the 32 inch option as well. Uh, in this example, we are given the dead load as 4 pounds per square foot. Uh, so I'm going to slide this to four pounds per square foot. But if you do not know what the dead load is, you can use this sliding bar uh, where you have a list of different cladding assemblies uh, and the approximate weights associated with those cladding assemblies. Further to that, you can also reach out to the cladding manufacturer and they should know the dead load of their panel system or cladding system uh, that you could enter in this calculator. For the purpose of this, I'm going to stick with the vertical spacing of 36 inches on center, and I'm going to have a girt gauge of 18. Uh, the screw arrangement, I would typically recommend a three screw, three screw arrangement, uh, but you can also leave it blank. Once you have entered all the inputs, uh, you can refer to the right side of the calculator, which provides you the outputs or the results. Uh, the most important results are shown in the blue box in the top right, and this actually follows along with you while you're going through the calculator. And it shows a summary of what you have entered. So we have entered a horizontal spacing of 16 inches, a vertical spacing of 36 inches, and it tells you what maximum allowable wind load and what maximum possible effective R value you can achieve based on the inputs that you've put in. So based on the inputs we put in, we can achieve a maximum allowable wind load of 29 pounds per square foot and an effective R value of R16. Uh, if we're looking at the project example, the maximum allowable wind load we're allowed for this example is 25 pounds per square foot. We are above the 25 pounds per square foot, so the spacing is okay. Uh, if you were to change uh, the vertical spacing from 36 to 48, you will see that the maximum, allow maximum allowable wind load has decreased from 29 pounds per square foot to 21. Now this is less than 25, so you know that that spacing is a bit too much uh, for this specific example. So I'm going to bring this down back to 36. 
And this also highlights how anything that you change in the inputs will di be directly uh, reflected in the blue box in the top right. So you can start changing the inputs and seeing how it would change the, the outputs. For example, if I change from horizontal to vertical, it went up from 29 pounds per square foot to 36. Uh, further to that, there's also something called the governing components. The governing components is the component within the assembly which is governing and resulting in that maximum wind load to occur. In the horizontal installation, the governing component is the fastener attaching the bracket to the substrate. Uh, but if you were to have a vertical installation, uh, it is now saying that the governing component is the girt because the girt's uh, span capabilities cannot accommodate the 36 inch vertical span and is now considered the governing component within this wall assembly. Uh, if the governing component is the girt, uh, you know that if you increase the thickness of the girt, that your maximum allowed wood load will realistically increase. So if I change it from 18 gauge to 16 gauge, it went up from 36 to 62. Not only did it go up uh, with the maximum wind load, but the governing com components also changed as the girt is no longer the governing components, but it is now the fastener attaching the isoclip to the substrates. So you can always play around with the inputs to, uh, with the live feed of the outputs to figure out how you can design your project how your project would work based on uh, changing certain parameters within your wall assembly. Further to this, there are these graphs along the right side and each graph shows how if you change certain inputs, how the output would change within uh, the calculator without having to change the actual physical inputs here. So for example, if we're going from, uh, it just shows you how if you increase the installation depth or increase the vertical spacing, the maximum allowable wind load is going to start to decrease. <clears throat> and a neat thing to keep in mind is if you hover over any of the points on this graph, it will show you what input, what inputs have resulted to that output in the graph. Uh, the another point in the graph is the maximum wind load compared to the vertical and horizontal spacing. As you would expect, the wider the spacing, the lower the maximum allowable wind load. And finally, the thermal performance, how if you increase the insulation depth, you're expected the maximum effective R value to increase as well. And more importantly, uh, something that is not always known is when you have a bigger spacing, you're not only saving money by having less clips on the wall, but you're also improving the total effective R value because you have less penetrations through your wall assembly and you have a more effective wall assembly. So you'll see that with 60 inch vertical spacing, you have the best effective R value. If you want to dive into things further, uh, you can actually click on the span table here and it will direct you to a span table. And this span table uh, can be used in your submittals. To read the span table, uh, you have the dead load in pounds per square foot in the column on the left, your vertical spacing as SV in inches, your horizontal spacing as SH in inches, and then the values in white in the middle is the maximum allowable wind load in pounds per square foot. And over here, the title just goes over the inputs that you put into the calculator. So this is a horizontal girt orientation with an 18 gauge stud and an insulation depth of four inches. So you can use this as part of your submittal package. You can also use this calculator as an estimating tool. Uh, it's very basic, but you can enter your wall width and height. So if you have a 75 foot wide wall, which is also 25 feet high, you would need approximately 504 clips on your wall uh, to based on your wall width and height. Now this is very basic. It doesn't include any details within the wall, such as window details or edge details. And that all needs to be considered during the estimating process. Further to this, if you want to include more submittals, you can enter your email and you can generate a report of the results. 
and this report goes over the different graphs that we went over. I'll give you the estimate uh, based on the wall that you entered in. It'll show you all the parameters that have resulted that you've put in the calculator and the results that you would obtain based on the parameters that you have entered. So it is a great overview of what you found based on the Oscope calculator and can be used in the submittal process. Some other neat tricks about the Ice Club calculator is if you are dealing with metric, you can actually change everything in the calculator to metric. Uh, so over here you can see uh, all the information is in metric. And if you want to go back to Imperial, you can do that. And if you want to show both, you can do that as well. And uh, once everything is completed and you want to clear all the information, if you want to start over again, you can just click the button start over and it will refresh the entire page. Finally, if you're an engineer uh, or someone that's just interested in how we're getting the results shown in this calculator, we do have design assumptions and methodology reports. So if we just open this up, it will have a report on the, how we achieved the maximum wind load and what assumptions were made, what limitations were provided, the basis of design, the fastener uh, values that we're using, the assembly overview, isoclip analysis and the fastener analysis so you can review this report if you're curious how you uh, how we are getting these results and if you have any questions at all about how to use this calculator what's going on in these reports or any questions about isoclips in general you can either give us a call at 844-740-2050 you can send us an email at info at isoclips.com or it could fill out this contact form, which is also in availability and contact, and all that information is under availability and contact as well. So please reach out to us, and I hope you learned something today. Have a great day, and we'll talk soon.